Hi, in this video we're going to talk about conditional statements, usually in the form of the if-else structure. So conditionals need a Boolean value, and a Boolean value is represented by either true or false. True and false are keywords in Java, meaning that when you type true, Java knows that you're looking for a Boolean value. So in Java, we check for equality by using double equals, and that's the same in Python as well. So that's not any different from what you've done in the past. So if I did five equals equals three, that would return false because five doesn't equal three. You can also use double equals with characters, single characters, like C equals equals C would be true. Um, you cannot use double equals with strings, and we will talk a little bit more about strings towards the end of the week. You can use double equals with um, doubles, although sometimes you have to be a little bit careful with that. And then there's also not equals. So not equals is just exclamation point equals, and that's also the same as what you've seen in Python. So exclamation point equals would be the negation of equals equals. So in terms of relational operators, so that's less than, less than or equal to, greater than, greater than or equal to, um, this is all the same as what you've seen in Python. So if I did five is less than three, it would return false. If I did uh, character C is less than character C, it would return false. And that's because Java looks at the character value of something um, and it, it looks at its um, ASCII value. So for example, um, the computer reads the letter C as a number, right? So um, that's the only uh, reason why you would use less than in, in that situation. But we're not going to really talk that much about that. Um, that's called lexicographical ordering. Anyway, um, you can also use it for double values. So 1.0 is less than 1.1. In Java, um, again, the not value is the same as it was in Python. So exclamation point in front of any Boolean would negate that Boolean. So if you did not true, it would return false. So exclamation point true would return false. Two things that are new in, Py in Java, so different from what we learned in Python, is that the AND operator, so if you're checking two conditions and you want to join them, instead of typing the word AND, AND is not a keyword um, in Java. So instead, you'd have to use this ampersand sign twice. Um, so double ampersand sign means AND, and then this double pipe. So um, you can find that by doing shift backslash. So that's the pipe. Um, and it's just like single straight up line, single straight up line. That would be or. Okay, so that's totally different from just typing or like we do in Python. So making advanced conditions. So let's say that we want to specify a condition that checks whether a user's age makes them a teenager or not. So mathematically, we might write the expression 12 is less than age, which is less than 20. And although in math class we called this an AND inequality, um, and we graphed it and we said, okay, an AND inequality is when you have um, some variable that's between two values, the word AND isn't actually written here. In code, we need to specify AND. So you can't just do 12 is less than age, which is less than 20. You would have to take the two separate inequalities and put them together using the and. So here it would have to be 12 is less than age and age is less than 20. So the basic if statement structure has the following form. So it's if. And then after if, we use parentheses. So inside the parentheses goes the condition. Now, you'll remember in Python, it was if and then no parentheses, and then just the condition and then a colon, 
right? So we're not using colons at all anymore. We're also not using indentation at all anymore to specify what goes inside and outside of a result. However, we do like to indent in Java just so that it's clear. So it might look like Python and it might look like the indentation is important, but actually it's not. The only thing that's important is to use curly brackets to include everything inside your result. Now, say you have only one thing inside the result. So you have if certain condition, then say right here you just said return true, right? So it was just like a single result. You actually wouldn't need the curly brackets. The curly brackets are used um, specifically if you want multiple lines of code within the result here. However, in class, we're always going to use curly brackets because it's just more clear um, and you'll get used to it and you'll get used to being able to like see how the curly brackets and the parentheses and all that kind of um, go together. So I would suggest always using curly brackets um, because they never hurt. They're always um, good for clarity. Note that there's no semicolon after the condition. So conditions, you're asking a question. When you're asking Java a question, you don't put a semicolon at the end. However, when you're making a statement, so these statements inside here, these would get semicolons. If they weren't comments here, then there would be semicolons at the end. So statements have semicolons, questions do not. So if condition else, so notice here the in the if else structure, um, it's very similar to what you've seen in Python, except that you have if parenthesis condition, open curly bracket, result, close curly bracket. After the close curly bracket, you have an else. Notice that you don't need any parentheses after the else because it's just anything else. Open curly bracket, throw the result in there, close curly bracket. Note again that there's no semicolon after the else because the else is asking the question. Else, and then the statement inside is what gets the, what gets the semicolon. Again, curly brackets are optional if there's only one resulting statement. However, you should always use them. All right, so here's an example of if, else, if in Java. So if you have if condition one, and then you have a statement, then you could do else if, you're just literally writing it out. Else, space, if. Different from in Python, where in Python you're doing elif. So you're just literally writing else if. You put another condition and then you put another result. You can keep going and going and going with these else ifs. Um, and then only the block corresponding to the first true condition will be executed. So for example, if some condition one, then it's gonna check else if, else if, else if, else if. So if this first else if happens, then it's gonna skip all the ones after it. And then if none of these else ifs happen, and the if, then it's gonna to go to this else. Okay, so here's an example of an actual real um, method. So in this method, before we have it, we start with an integer variable called account balance, and it starts at 2000. Then we have the method begin, so it's a public Boolean valid transaction, and then it takes a withdrawal amount. So we have an integer parameter called withdrawal, and it returns a Boolean. So notice here, because it says Boolean as the return value, we must return a Boolean, so either true or false. So here it says if, and then in parentheses, withdrawal is less than or equal to account balance, return true. So we can withdraw a certain amount as long as we have it in the bank. Else return false. And if I were to run this method, Using these values, this is what would be returned. Here's an example where you're returning a double, so a decimal value, and you are taking a Boolean as the parameter. 
So get price is the name of the method. Boolean has coupon is either a true or false parameter. So they're either going to put in true or false when they call the method. And if has coupon is true, you're returning 10. But if it's not, then you're returning 1250. Now, you can use Boolean expressions like this. So you could say if has coupon equals equals true. And if has coupon is true, then true equals true, and then it would return 10. However, you could skip some of the steps here, and you could just write if has coupon. Has coupon is already a, 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 um, a Boolean. So if it already has the value of true or false, then you don't have to put equal equal true there. When you first start coding, 99% of students will have this. And then as you get better and better and lazier and lazier, um, you'll just write it like this. If has coupon, else return whatever. Okay, so for your assignment today, you're going to be doing three coding bats. You're going to have today, tomorrow, and then on Wednesday, you are going to have a very short um, Google form quiz with just like some quick questions about what we've done in Java so far um, and it's open book and notes and all that stuff um, and then by Wednesday you also have to have these three coding bat problems done so don't save them all until Wednesday because like there's also a, a short quiz to take on Wednesday so you should try to do these today and tomorrow so um, before you try these, I'm going to go over one similar coding bat problem with you. Uh, so let's get out of here and we'll go into here. So we're going to together um, do the coding bat problem called has teen. So it says that a number is a teen if it is the, in the range of 13 to 19 inclusive. Inclusive just means including 13 and including 19. Given three integer value, uh, values, return true if one or more of them are teen. So notice here it says one or more, meaning that only one of them has to be a teenager. And then it's fine. So only one has to be a teen. So I'm going to do this the long way, and then I'm going to show you a shorter way and then an even shorter way. Um, so let's start by looking at our parameters. So our parameters are A, B, and C, and these are three integer variables. Has teen is just the name of the method. You're not going to be using that at all. Um, so here we have, let's say if, and let's say something like a is less than uh, a is less or greater than 12, and so a double ampersand, and a is less than 20. Now, after we close the parentheses, we are going to open the curly bracket, and in coding that, they like to finish curly brackets for you. So when you open a curly bracket, after that, if you hit enter, it'll close the curly bracket already for you so that you don't have to remember to close it. So it depends on the program that you use. Some programs do it, some programs don't. But just get used to encoding bat because you're going to be using coding bat all the time in AP if you take AP. Um, anyway, so you have A is greater than 12 and A is less than 20. What do we want to return if, well, I mean, it's just A, right? So if A is a teen, then right away we're going to return true. We don't even care about anything else. We're going to return true. Now, we can also check B. So instead of rewriting this whole thing again, I'm just going to copy it. And I'm just going to say else if. And then I'm going to use the same condition, except I'm going to change this to B and B. I'm going to hit enter. I like to space it out and just make it look nice and indented. So we open the curly bracket, we hit enter. It'll close the curly bracket for us. And notice it also indents for us. So it kind of looks like Python. Even though the indentation doesn't matter, it's still nice for it to be able to see that. Um, so just for you to look at it. Uh, return true. And then there's one other 
case where we're going to return true. And that's if B is greater than 12 and C is less than 20, we're going to return true. Else, let's return false. Okay. So now when we click go, yay, all of our test cases worked. Now, say instead of using this else, we just at the very end, after all of those if statements were run, we just wrote return false. Now, the beauty of return statements are that once you return something, that's it, the method ends. So say A was a teen, right? Then the compiler would only go through this first part. As soon as it returns true, it would end the method. So you wouldn't even look at this part or this part or this part. So you don't really need the last else. You can just have this last line of code only get reached if it goes through this whole gauntlet of stuff and doesn't return true, then you could return false at the very end. So that's up to you. You can throw the else in there if it makes you feel better or not. Okay, one other thing that you could have done as opposed to having a bunch of if else if statements is you could throw these together with an or. So you could use if, and I'll put an open parenthesis around all these things and then an inside parenthesis with the A is greater than 12, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I could do that. And then let me copy this part. Um, so I could say or, and you can even hit enter here um, because Java doesn't care about spaces or indentation or hitting enter between values or anything like that. So here I could say if, a is greater than 12 and A is less than 20, or this, or this, return true. So that's a lot faster to write and a lot less lines of code, um, but it does get a little bit more complicated because you're kind of right, like putting everything in the same if condition. And then the very last way to do this, which is the laziest way to do it, is technically this whole thing is a Boolean, right? So this or this or this is actually already going to return true or false. So you could be really, really lazy and just say, say this, return this whole thing. I would not recommend trying to do this when you're first learning um, because it's really complicated and hard to read. Um, but if I clicked go here, this would also work. You can just return the whole chunk of um, conditions here without even using if statements. But I would recommend using if statements for now. All right, so that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to stop by office hours or um, send me an email.